I'm Michael Carey, the pastor of Church in the Wild. Rightly so, a favorite verse for many Christians is Jeremiah 29, 11. It's even more powerful when you know a little bit about its context. The year was 593 BC. As the prophets had predicted, because of their continued idolatry, the Lord had sent the Babylonian king, Nebuchadnezzar, to conquer his people. The Lord had concluded that blessing his people with comfort and security had not formed their spiritual character. And so the sovereign Lord decided to refine them through hardship. Five years earlier, Nebuchadnezzar had begun a series of deportations and he started with the best and the brightest leaders among the Jewish people, people like Daniel. Jeremiah confirmed that this was God's will, but a false prophet named Hananiah contradicted Jeremiah. In chapter 28, Hananiah declared that in two years, God would break the power of the Babylonian king and that God's people would return from exile. And so Jeremiah sought the Lord's counsel again. And chapter 29 tells us what he heard. I want to begin reading with verse 4. This is actually in the form of a letter written to the exiles and also to those in Jerusalem. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage, so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there. Do not decrease. Also, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I've carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Well, this is a really surprising message. God was saying to his people, no, Hananiah's all wrong. Jeremiah's got it right. I want my people to be in exile for a lot longer. And in fact, I want you who are already there and the many of you who are going to be headed into exile in Babylon to settle down there. And you're going to be, because you're going to be there for a long time. And actually history shows that that was the case. The Lord said, uh, build infrastructure and let your sons marry there, your daughters marry, expect to have grandchildren there. And while you're there, instead of being angry because you're now a minority, an often mocked minority, sometimes persecuted minority there in Babylon, the pagan city, I want you to seek the peace and the prosperity of the city. Well, let's read a little more before we kind of make our own application to this, seek our own application. Verse 8, yes, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Do not let the prophets and diviners among you deceive you. Do not listen to the dreams you encourage them to have. They are prophesying lies to you in my name. I have not sent them, declares the Lord. So Jeremiah says, the Lord says, Hanani and his bunch are way off base. And I, and I really find this phrase intriguing. Do not listen to the dreams you encourage the prophets to have. I think that's a message to God's people everywhere for all time. That the things you want the Lord to do, in this case, re, you know, restore your prominence and your power. Those are your dreams. Don't pressure the religious leaders to tell you what you want to hear. Encourage them to tell you what God has for you to do. And let's hear the rest of it, starting with verse 10. This is what the Lord says, when 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my gracious promise to bring you back to this place. And then here's verse 11, that wonderful verse. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, 
plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call upon me and, and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I've banished you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. There is so much in that. Um, what's clear is that God is planning to use 70 years, at least three generations, very purposefully, that God wants to, over the generations, forge a people who have learned to, to honor him and worship him and live by his covenant, even when they're in the minority, and to use that strengthened people to be a blessing to the world, that God should, that, that they should trust God, that he will fulfill his promises not to abandon his people, and that as they seek him, they will find him, and that they will return to their land and be restored as a people. Now, when we read this 2,600-year-old promise, we don't try to apply it woodenly or literally to our own historical context. I mean, our, our, our nation's a very different kind of setting in our context than the Jewish people in exile 2,600 years ago. However, we do look for principles that are universal, principles that are timeless. I think chapter 29 of Jeremiah resonates powerfully whenever God's people are struggling with loss, particularly as a people. As a, as a group, like, you know, as the whole church, as we're struggling with these questions, you know, why has God allowed us to lose comfort and security as the majority people of our land? Surely God wants to restore us to prominence and power. We are in a season where many Christians are, are, are feeling like, they're in exile, um, um, like, you know, who took my country? Even though there's not been a, a military invasion, there's been so many changes. Um, our neighbors, even our sons and daughters and grandchildren may not necessarily share our faith or, or embrace all of our values or, or live the lifestyle that, that we choose to live. And I think because of these changes and it feels like we're in exile in our own land, many Christians are tempted just to kind of live in anger. And they, they are very angry and fearful and they're, they're fighting the impulse uh, not to fight back with people. Jesus has taught his followers not to let anger overcome them. Uh, Paul wrote it this way, be angry, but do not sin. Um, Jesus teaches his followers, don't be fearful. Continually, Jesus said to his followers and says to us now, um, my peace I give to you. And We've been talking so much about peace. God wants us to embody his peace. That's what we mean by being a non-anxious presence in the world. And instead of trying to prevail over people um, and reclaim our power to love people and be gracious towards them, even at times learning to love our enemies. For this to happen, we have to trust that God is at work. God is using the circumstances of the changing culture to refine us, teaching us to be a blessing to those who don't know him. And so Jeremiah 29, verse 7, just has incredible meaning for us today. Seek the peace and the prosperity of the city to which I've carried you, to which you're in exile, where you feel like you're in exile. Credible implications for how we relate to people who don't share our faith, our values, our lifestyle all kinds of implications for how we engage in ministry and mission to people who may be very different from us. 
And on an individual level, as a Jesus follower, can I respond to the changing circumstances around me by following Jesus and building bridges with people who are far from him? Perhaps for the opportunity to share with them the name of Jesus and why I have found hope and why I've found life change in Jesus' name. And perhaps even have the privilege of helping other people become disciples of Jesus Christ. And as we wrestle with, um, you know, how we vote and decisions in our country, you know, asking ourselves, how can I seek the peace and the prosperity, the common good for all people, and be a blessing to the world? So we have to trust that God is at work. And now having, having learned a little bit more about the context, the powerful meaning of Jeremiah 29, 11 just jumps off the page. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Let's believe it.